As the leader of the Senate uh, of the state of California, it's my role to move policies, uh, policies that help improve the human condition, that make good economic sense by reducing our carbon footprint. And we have done so successfully because we have delinked and decoupled carbon from GDP, which makes us the sixth largest economy on planet Earth. And we have done so by increasing clean energy jobs in the clean energy space, uh, channeling the power of the wind, the power of the sun. And by doing so, we are reducing our utility rates, and at the same time, we are removing carbon from the atmosphere. So that's a win-win uh, for California. And if we can do it in California, it's uh, a, a fact that it can be done throughout the great nation of the United States of America. I'm a civil rights attorney. I had the pleasure to chair the city's environment commission for the past four years. And for the past 10, I've been doing everything we can to hold up the idea that solar is for everyone, to provide leadership here in San Francisco that can help support efforts at the state level, at the national level, and really what I'm excited to share tonight is how local efforts to promote solar can shape the way we think about solar across the globe. The data shows that 66% of the California residential market is in neighborhoods that are low and moderate income in 2015. The greatest growth of the residential sector is in low and moderate income neighborhoods. Not only that, but we're seeing a 25% growth in solar for renters and multifamily housing sector, and of course, ongoing growth of solar for farms and schools. This is bringing resiliency to California, to California's grid. We have more jobs in the clean energy space than agriculture, fishing, as well as Hollywood, film, as well as TV. And yes, we have more jobs combined than the entire oil and gas industry in the great state of California. So what I want to say with this is that Clean energy is no longer a niche market or a plaything of the wealthy. It is officially a pillar of our economy. What we cannot accept is these arguments that continue to be put forth that solar customers are costing other customers money. Clean energy is bringing the cost down, so we are constantly in a, you know, in a education mode to try to do this sort of research um, and get out there and spread our points. I believe that the consumers are going to increasingly look to companies like Sunrun and, and peer companies to understand how do I incorporate storage? Do I want to buy an electric vehicle? What's the right time for me to be consuming or exporting the power? And that's the real business opportunity. Um, and, and, that's, and that's one of the things that I'm very excited about. A lot of you in this room, and surely my boss, Barack Obama, fought for the ITC extension. And we got five years. It's going to spur maybe $50 billion of investment. That's a big deal. That's a big deal. But we got to keep looking at solutions that are going to expand access and lower costs. Because your zip code should not be a determinant in whether you get to tap in to the cost reduction that we've seen on the PV module. Solar is for everyone. The legacy industries, they're taking out of communities. They are polluting communities. This is an industry that essentially gives back jobs, environmental health, good things, energy savings, and a better life. Because I know I believe in solar. Do you believe in solar? All right. Let's go get them.